Hello everyone. Thank you for welcoming me into your classroom today. My name is Zoe Kirk and I work for the RDOS. One of the favorite parts of my job is coming out into classrooms and teaching about the big black bears. I love black bears. So before we get started today, I would like to acknowledge that I live, work and play on the unceded traditional territory of the Silk Peoples. I owe a lot of gratitude to the Wild Safe BC program because they've trained me and they've provided me the materials to come into your classroom today. And also to the BC Conservation Officer Service. Those are the men and women who are dedicated to keeping wildlife wild and communities safe. So today we're going to explore what and why bears den. What does den mean? It's a short word, D-E-N, but it means quite a lot. A den, when talking about wildlife, means like a dugout cave or cavern a place where bears and other critters go to sleep for the winter. But in the Okanagan, that can be well over three months. Wow! We're going to learn how and why bears do this. We're going on a journey to find out why bears are amazing. So today I'm joined here by my big bear pelt. And we'll be looking at some things like the bear skull a little more closely later. And your teacher has some really fun activities and talking points for after this presentation. So let's get started. Did I say bears are amazing? Well, here are a few local bears to learn about. The single bear on the left is from Summerland. He is a very black colored black bear. A male bear is called a boar. The four bears in the tree are also from Summerland. There's a female bear called a sow. She is here, right where the arrow shows. And the remainder of those bears are her cubs. They've climbed a big pine tree waiting for dusk when they can come down the tree and then forage a big fancy word meaning eat. 
and they're looking for the walnuts from a tree close by. It's a funny kind of a thing, but black bears come in many colors, not just black. But weird, they're still all called black bears. They come in black, like the picture. They come in a brown black, like this picture. They also come in a beautiful blonde color or cinnamon bear, as you see here, right next to that big black bear. They also come in some lovely shades of Kermode colored cream or spirit bear. This is a very rare coat color for a bear and is found on the BC coast and a couple have been found in the Kootenays. And here are some lovely brown mahogany and walnut colored bears. Well, <gasps> hey, where did that grizzly bear come from? Muscling his way into our presentation on black bears, but we'll show him. So as I was saying, before Mr. Grizzly Bear barged in, did I mention that bears are amazing? They can sleep for three months at a time. Can you? Even if you had the most beautiful bedroom in the world, they can smell five times better than a bloodhound. Can you? Bears love BC as much as we do. And we know this because one quarter or 25% of all of Canada's black bears live in BC. That's 120 to 160,000 black bears. That's four times the number of bears as there are people in Penticton. But you know what? We also have some things in common with bears. They need space to play and grow and roam just like we do. They need food just like we do. But I wouldn't advise asking a bear to a tea party. And they need shelter and a house just like we do. A shelter is a home and a den is a home. And that's the topic for today's discussion. So we're going to talk about why bears go to sleep for over three months or so each year and where they go to sleep for so long. But first we need to understand denning versus a big world called hibernation. Well, many people think that bears hibernate. That's a big word. And it means go into a deep sleep or state that all of our systems slow down, kind of like that little frog. His blood is thick and his heart is beating very slowly. He's not able to move or react to big noises or danger. It's only once the weather warms up in the sun and he thaws out can he begin to move and restart his regular life. An amazing feat, but bears are right up there because they den. Denning means two things. I know it's a bit confusing, but once we talk about it, you will understand the words much better. A den is a place, kind of like your bedroom. It's a small space that animals use as a home. And it also means what bears do in winter. And you can see here a bedroom on the left and a den on the right. So bears like to go to their den and sleep all winter. Why do they slumber and not hibernate completely? Because they need to be awake enough so the sows can give birth to their cubs and care for them until it is warm enough for them to come out of their dens. The sows, the female bears, snuggle and feed and care for their cubs, kind of half awake, just like you see those cute little baby bears there. And she does that for a couple of months over the winter. So what 
do bear dance look like? I'm so glad you asked. Well, bears have different ideas about their Dan homes, just like you and I. So let's just stop here, close your eyes, and think about what your bedroom looks like. Do that in your imagination. And then think about the time you might have been in a friend's bedroom. I bet those two bedrooms weren't very much alike, were they? So here are two different types of bear dens or winter homes. The top picture shows a roughly clawed out hole on a creek bank. The bottom picture shows a very stylish den. The bear that built this den has used tree roots and all the rocks to help support that dugout, as you can see here. And the entrance hole is small and tidy. This den is a den that even Martha Stewart would like. Is another type of den close by in Kamloops, but really not very fashionable. To make this den, a big female sow bear simply dug a hole in a slash pile of fallen trees and leaves with her great big paws and claws. She was so fat and healthy, she felt she didn't even need a roof. She went to Dan in November, and then the fall leaves covered her up. And then by Christmas, the snow had come and it had fallen on top of the leaves that were on top of the bear and insulated her and made it a nice warm den. Then in February, she gave birth to two cubs in this open style winter den. But because she was so big and healthy, she could snuggle those little baby cubs beneath her and keep them nice and warm. Now, isn't this a lovely winter den? In Naramata, close to where I used to live, in a gulch near a creek, this bear built a well dug out design den. If you were out in the woods and saw this den or any of the other dens that we've looked at, do you think it's a good idea to go and stick your head inside? You're right, it's a bad idea because you don't know what's inside that den. Even a couple of big stones or crevices in rocky slopes can be used as dens for bears and other critters like coyotes, cougars, and ground animals. And the reason that we've been looking at all different styles of dens is so that we can recognize them. We can be safe when coming across potential den sites while camping or hiking. Oh, but whoa, hey, wait, suddenly it's spring and the bears want to come out of the den. Hmm, how they do that? Well, first, the mother bear, the sow, will tell her cubs to stay inside in the warm den where it's safe while she exits and sort of has a look around just like you and me, stretch, yawn, have a sort of a gander about what the day is like, and then she needs to eat some green grass to get her tummy used to eating food again. Then when she feels it's safe, she'll go back to the den and she'll bring her little cubs out. That's what good mother bears do. And you can see from this picture, these little cubs are just about a month old. She has them safely up a tree and out of danger. You know, the first thing a mother bear does is teach her cubs to climb trees. Then it's on to a bear's favorite pastime, eating. And just as nature is waking up in the spring and things are growing fast, Bears need to take advantage of that and eat, eat, eat. They need green grass or things like skunk cabbage roots to help their tummies adjust to eating again after the long months without food. 
and they can also take advantage of fish and other animals that have died over the winter, but not yet rotted because of the cold nights. How does a bear know what to eat and know where to get it? That's a good question. Well, bears are well adapted to finding food, catching it, and eating it. So, how do they know where the food is? Well, we talked about this earlier, that they have a nose five times better than a bloodhound. Pretty amazing. That means a bear can smell a peanut butter sandwich over a kilometer away. So how do they do that? Well, let's just all look at our nose. And our nose, if we go side to side, just grab your nose and wiggle it a little bit, you'll feel that there's one single cartilage that goes down the center. Well, have a look at this bear skull and have a look at the nose of this bear. You can see that down that nose or up the nose, all of those little cartilages just like ours, well, that's where the olfactory sense is, another big word. That's where all the smelling glands are. You and I have one, and look at how many the bear has. That's how they can smell way better than us. So they can smell where their food is. And then we know that the sow takes those little cubs and she teaches them everything she knows about how to get food. She has about 18 months to teach those cubs where to get the grass when it's green in the spring, where to get all of the dead animals that may have died over the winter. She knows whereabouts to go to get the very first fruit and vegetable berry type plants up in nature. So she teaches her cubs their whole range of where to go when to get what to eat. And when it comes to digging roots or when it comes to really getting into the flesh of a salmon, well, they have perfectly adapted paws for that. So let's just have a look at, oh, Mr. Bear Pilt. So here we have a beautiful, beautiful example of the claws on a bear. Well, of course, they can dig just like that sow did when she made the den. And they can also tear flesh and eat salmon by tearing it up. So why do they have such good noses? Why are they so well adapted to getting and eating and foraging for food? It's because they need lots of it. Because they've slept over the winter and haven't had anything to eat, they've lost a lot of their body weight. And they need to really get going in the spring to replace all of that fat that they lost over the winter. And then they need to eat more so that they can then go back to den in the fall nice and fat and healthy. So when they get out of their den, they need twice the amount of food I need in a day. And then quickly it ends up to be four times what I need. And then six times what I need. And then 10 times what I need. By August, bears need about 10 times what you and I need every day to get ready to den for winter. And sometimes that drive for food puts them in conflict with humans. So a bear's life is pretty busy. Eat, eat, eat. Find the foods you need to get fat for winter, then find a place to make a den and build it and eat some more. But sometimes bears get sidetracked. They can smell our garbage and they can be fooled into thinking that our rubbish and garbage is bear food. Our throwaways are easily smelled by bears. 
and in their need for food to get fat for winter, they can be lured into places like our landfills, where our garbage goes, because you know, they have that really big nose, and then they can be lured into our neighborhoods when garbage is left at the curb for too long. Bears can be spotted in some communities in the fall when the drive for food is at its peak. Bears enter a phase called hyperphagia. That's a big word. And that means that they're hungry for up to 20 hours a day. Remember, bears have to gain a one third of more of their body weight to store fat for the winter. So it's important that we understand that bears can mistake our garbage for food. And that's what can sometimes get them into trouble with humans. So we just need to make sure that we keep our garbage nice and secure, not out like this, and help keep the bears and people safe. If we remember that bears are all eyes, nose, and stomachs, we'll be able to share our world and our ecosystem with them. Well, it's not all eat, eat, eat. There are some upside in a bear's life. As the mothers teach their cubs about life, they learn to climb trees, have some fun and wrestle. They learn to catch salmon right out of the air as the fish come back up the creeks in the fall. And you know, they're pretty adaptable. These bears know the owners of this pool only come on weekends. So the sow has used it as a place to relax. She thinks it's a small lake for her cubs and a fun thing for her cubs to do to amuse themselves. Wow, we've made it to the last of the presentation. That went by quickly. I don't know about you, but I've sure enjoyed coming into your classroom and teaching you just a little bit about black bears. Did I tell you that I think black bears are amazing? So hopefully this presentation will spark some really good discussions about black bears and how we can help to make sure that we don't lure black bears into our community. And I hope that it encourages you to learn more about other wildlife. And even I hope that you invite me back into your classroom another time to discuss wildlife. So on behalf of Wild Safe BC, the regional district and my friends here, the little bear in the tree and the big black bear behind me. I thank you for your attention. Good day.